Shout out to G-Man Boxing. All right, people. So this video could go one of two ways. Could either be a reasonably quick sit down, you know, have a listen for a few minutes, get my points across and then done. But you know me, once I get started, I tend to go on a bit. So this could be one where you need to stick that kettle on, get yourself a nice cup of tea and a few biscuits and let's have a listen. So Anthony Joshua yesterday, it was reported, it was reported that his comeback opponent for April the 1st, which is the date we're hearing, is set to be Dempsey McKean. Okay. Now, understand, Joshua is on the comeback trail, right? He's had two back-to-back -back losses, and he suffered a mental breakdown in the ring. All right, that's all that's happened over the last two years, right? So Joshua now is looking to rebuild. I remember hearing an analogy a few years ago that confidence can sometimes be like getting, we'll say, a sponge or something, putting it in a fish tank and just holding it down, you know? The top of the fish tank is where your baseline level of confidence is and the sponge or whatever you put in it, when it's pushed right down, it's right down to the bottom. That's how far your confidence can dip. And that's how I kind of see Anthony Joshua. Now, given time, when you take the hand away, that sponge will eventually reach the surface. So it'll eventually return to what it once was. Eventually, it takes time. Not everyone is gonna be the same. Not everyone's ceiling is gonna be as high. It's not always going to come up at the same speed. Some will need to go at a different way. Some will need to go at a quicker. Some will only need to go, might need to go a long time. You never know. Which way is Joshua? That I don't know. I suspect, and these are just my suspicions, I suspect he might need a bit longer than your average fighter. Like, look at example Tyson Fury. If he was in a situation where he'd taken back to back losses and he'd had an issue in the ring, I'm pretty sure that give him a few comeback fights, he'd be pretty much back to where he was. I, I, Fury is just a more confident person innately than Anthony Joshua. There's no two ways about it. You know, you'll never have an AJ fanboy try and convince me that AJ has the same level of confidence as Tyson Fury. He just doesn't. I would even argue he probably doesn't have the same mental strength as Tyson Fury. Definitely, probably not. So with Joshua, it could take a little bit longer. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is... Not just in the comments of the video I done on the potential of Joshua versus Dempsey McKean, which is being reported. It's not signed and sealed, set in stone yet, but thinking about it logically, you know, he is undefeated. He's been fighting on the zone. I don't know if he's a matchroom fighter necessarily. I don't remember Eddie Hearn signing him, but I know his last two fights have been on the zone. Maybe more. I don't know. I didn't really go in depth into his box rec to check. You know, I know his last two were on the zone. I know that he could have had more. I don't know. So it, it kind of does make sense because it's like you, you've undefeated, it's in-house. This McKean is no great shakes, truth be told. So I wouldn't envision AJ having much trouble with him. He might look pretty devastating against him. You never know. Um, but you always get that with undefeated guys. You, you, you just don't really know when they're up against it. You know, you look at someone like Tom Schwartz, who Fury fought. I mean, that guy, you know, you didn't need to say, well, you know, this is, he just, that was a pudding if ever I seen one. There was nothing that was going to convince me otherwise. McCain, I think it's probably the same, but he definitely, I, I think he's a bit better than a Tom Schwartz, truth be told. But I've seen a lot of people having, you know, a go with Joshua saying, oh, this is terrible, you know, Eddie Hearn, how do, he's going to put this on pay-per-view and this, that, and the other. And look, my response is, is the first and foremost, what did you expect as a comeback opponent for Anthony Joshua? You know, realistically, you know, you had people like me, you had people like Hatman saying, actually, you know, Chris Ariola, that type of level, I'd be perfectly fine with that as a comeback opponent because it's not like AJ is coming back and saying to people, well, I'm at world level. I'm, I'm, he's acknowledged the fact that it's a comeback. He's acknowledged that. I understand that. So I'm not going to go and ridicule him coming back against MC McKean because I know it's not a top level opponent. It's just to come back and help build his confidence. And again, with Dylan White in the summer, at this stage now, Dylan White is not the fighter he was, I don't think. And I think with Joshua, it's it's a much easier fight. He'll have an easier time with Dylan White now than he did in 2015, in my opinion. So I think that they're fine. I would like to see Joshua maybe even have as much as three or four comeback fights, truth be told, just to get the confidence up, just to feel like you have that, I don't want to say invincibility, because that's probably well and truly gone now, but that you are still that force, you know, that wrecking ball who can go in, he can go for the jugular, he can get rid of these guys. I, want, I think... 
that's how he wants to feel and if i was wanting him to kind of get back that level i would say maybe three four fights comeback fights realistically against cb level opposition so i really don't have an issue with mc mckean truth be told a lot of people were saying that you know they had an issue because he wasn't that good and again i was saying what did you expect you know you're coming back after two losses and a mental breakdown in the ring did you expect him to go in there against you know a frank sanchez or someone like that because i'd be re i'd be actually saying what the hell are you doing putting him in with a frank sanchez or a jojo that'd be the opposite i'd be like that's a bad move it's a really bad idea in my opinion if you were bringing him back that'd be a really bad idea so i'm fine with that with regards to the zone pay-per-view I-, I think that's a formality at this point and at the end of the day i think that this is an issue not just endemic to the zone it's endemic to boxing in general now you can obviously say this is a catch-22 at the same time because me as a fan of the sport who knows exactly what those fighters go through because i've never been a pro myself but i've seen the sacrifice a lot of them give up i've seen the money it costs to have a pro career i mean we look at people like joshua and fury and canelo living in mansions we have to look at the grassroots level and small hall guys a lot of them are losing money just to chase their dream they're selling tickets they're trying to make a they're trying to break even much less make a living out of boxing so at grassroots level you see it so when you see fighters get paid career high money etc it's a good thing for me it's nice to see because these guys are putting everything literally everything on the line going into that ring you know you anything can happen you just don't know so i like seeing these guys get compensated well for it i do there's also a catch to that it does mean that the promoters are under more pressure to make a profit on the show you know so i understand that so i understand that that could mean ticket sales could be a lot higher i understand that it means you know, confectionery and stuff like that could be a lot higher i understand that it means that the undercard could be weaker i understand that it means it's going to probably be on pay-per-view you know that's the catch-22 i get that it's still not nice it's not nice when you see it and there are times where i feel like you know you you know what i'm talking about tyson fury or a tree i mean that was a real case of that could have gone on standard bt he could have fought chisora for less and put that on standard bt i'm amazed it did five hundred thousand buyers that's the number i'm hearing with being reported i'm amazed it was that high truth be told really for the price it was time of the year it was and the fight the level of the fight i'm amazed it did that many truth be told so obviously tyson fury has a decent enough following i mean it's not just you could say like oh well, aj's done over a million yeah he has he's done over a million of big fights and they weren't the best part of 30 pounds you know this was a, a mismatch everyone knew that and it was near 27.95 crazy crazy that done so many 500,000 really is but i understand that that is the catch 22 you know and joshua pre usec the rematch we heard that the zone deal shares in the zone something like 50 million per fight now i would imagine that that number of 50 million per fight has gone down i would imagine that that was an if you beat usec offer and there was also a if you lose the usec offer that we probably weren't privy to i wouldn't imagine he's getting 50 million for his next three fights i just wouldn't imagine he might i don't know but i doubt it but a dempsey mckean versus anthony joshua if you're paying joshua however much 50 million just hypothetically 50 million how are you going to recoup that how are you even going to come close to recouping that if it's if you're not going to do it in a stadium you're going to probably do it in the o2 the tickets are probably going to be there and you're going to have to do it on pay-per-view you can't do that on standard the zone at the end of the day the zone are also trying to get subscriptions joshua is not the star he once was but he will generate subscriptions in my opinion even if he is fighting at mc mccain the dylan white fight's an easier fight to sell truth be told and i'm surprised they're waiting until the summer to do that i really thought they'd do it now to be honest with you i think it's an easier sell and i think it would probably get more subscriptions than this but you never know so am i happy that it's probably going to be on pay-per-view no do i understand it yeah i i do as much as i might not like it i do understand it um it's it's a catch-22 you know we want to see these guys get paid we want to see the opponents get paid well as well but that is one that is an issue and these big huge massive crazy generational paydays they result in that unfortunately it's just a case of how much will the pay-per-view be that i don't know i would like to see the zone do something for their subscribers you know obviously i still pay my the zone i've no intention to cancel on it why would i 
the only issue I ever really have with the zone. Some of the cards have been a bit lackluster, I have to say, but more so the UK cards. More so the UK cards, some of them haven't been amazing. That's a minor nitpick, realistically. I kind of just, you know my stance, I, I, the broadcast team, Andy Lee, even Andy Lee has his moments where it's just like, ugh, Ade is the only decent one. And I'm not just saying that because my mate, I'm saying that because he is. You know, he's a very good interviewer. He's very articulate. He knows what he's doing. He's not shy in front of camera. He can actually do the job. The rest of them just trot a lot of them in the bin. They seriously, like Andy Lee, pundit, yeah, fine. But the rest of them just, just kick him out the door. Just the, the, God, see you later. Bye bye. Keep Barry Jones. Bring David Hay. Bring a Carl Fram or Carl Frotch in. A bit of banter. And, you know, Andy Clark is better than Mike Costello, in my opinion. Just saying. That's a minor nitpick. But that's the kind of situation with Anthony Joshua. I, I think that people who are critiquing Joshua coming back against the Dempsey McKean, at the end of the day, the word comeback, you know, I'm not viewing this as Joshua come back at world level. I'm viewing him as him trying to rebuild after two back-to-back -back losses and a mental breakdown in the ring. That's how I'm viewing it. And I would say that, a bit, look, with Tyson Fury in 2018, he had his comeback against Sefa Safiri, and then he was on the undercard of Carl Frampton versus Luke Jackson against Pianetta. Now, Fury, in my opinion, went through a lot worse than what Joshua did. So for him to actually go and fight Wilder in December, and bear in mind, Joshua could be fighting, I'm not going to say Fury, I just you just don't know what way the rematch will go and retain. But let's say you could be fighting a Wilder in the autumn. Could be, you know, excellent with brackets, we put that up. But he could be fighting someone a year removed from his loss. Fury was only back in June, and in December he was fighting Wilder. That's crazy when you think about it. You know, come back from losing 300 pounds, or that's not 300 pounds, over 100 pounds of weight, he was over 400 pounds. It's crazy, really, out of the ring for the best part of three years. Problems with alcohol, it really is remarkable when you think about it. Joshua, I don't think, has that level of confidence. He's not been through that. Um, and if he did, I think he'd need a long, long time to recover from that. Seriously, a long one. Uh, but going back to what I was talking about in this video, I'm not going to critique him for it. You know, people could say, gee, you're such an AJ fanboy. Look, I've critiqued AJ a plenty on here, and I will do it again. I have no doubt in my mind that I will do it again. You know, I don't have favorite fighters. I'm not a fan of any fighter. All I'm a fan of is the sport of boxing. I want to see the sport of boxing thrive. I want to see it thrive. I want to see eyes on the sport. There are many fighters who I do not like as people. I just, I, whatever about them, their character, everything, I just do not like them. But God, I would give them credit if they do something in that ring that's worth credit. You know, I've long since said one of my favorite fighters when he was in his prime was Sergei Kovalev. I loved them. I love watching them. I wouldn't miss a Kovalev fight. But do I like Kovalev the person? I think he's a scumbag. I really, I think he's an absolute scumbag. But I'm not gonna let that take away from what he's doing in the ring. If you understand. I'm not going to let my feelings dictate how I view a fighter's performance or how I view his chances. Did I think he'd beat Andre Ward both times? No, I picked Andre Ward both times. Despite the fact that I preferred Sergei Kovalev, the fighter. But I picked Ward both times. Because obviously he was, I assessed it. That's what I do on here. Obviously I wasn't doing videos back then, but that's how I do it. I've never been someone who picks sides. I don't like that. I don't like getting attached to these people because at the end of the day they're people I don't know them they don't know me I've got flaws they've got flaws they're human beings we all have flaws never look at someone as a saviour never ever do it just, just don't do it everyone is human everyone bleeds everyone has flaws everyone breathes the same air everyone has flaws but if someone does something praiseworthy praise them if they do something that warrants critique you critique them that's the way I do it with Joshua I'm not going to critique Dempsey McKean because he's on a comeback with regards to pay-per-view, yeah, I'd rather it wasn't, but I understand why it is. I understand why it is. Um, that's not going to make it any easier. Will I pay for it? Probably not. I haven't paid for the zone pay-per-view yet. I don't think I will pay for Joshua McKean, nor do I think I'll pay for him versus White. Would I pay for him versus Wilder Fury? Yes, I would. Would I pay for... It wouldn't be pay-per-view over here, but would I pay for Garcia Davis... It wouldn't be pay-per-view over here, I don't think anyway. But yeah, I would if it was. If it was cheap enough, yeah, I would pay for it. I would. I would. You know? So it, it that's my way. Been going off on a bit of a tangent here. That's my thoughts on this. Let me know yours in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts on everything I discussed in this video. 
do you feel the critique of Joshua is being blown overboard with the name Dempsey McKean being reportedly his next opponent? It's nothing set in stone, but reportedly that's his next one. Do you think it's, it's gone overboard? And do you agree with what I've said in this video? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll leave it there, people. I hope you enjoyed the video. Smash the like button if you could. As always, smash that goddamn thing. You know, just hit that like button. Boom, bam, see you later. There you go. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. For now, lads and lassies, I'll talk to you. Peace.